Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier podcast. We're here on on a special episode because we're doing a collaboration with the uh, Newcomers on Fire podcast with the host, uh, Miguel Abascal. Uh, how are you doing today, Miguel? I'm doing great, Lucky. I'm super happy to be here again. It sounds good. And we thought we'd jump on because both of us have podcasts and we were having an online discussion on LinkedIn about informational interviews. So Miguel had put a post in regards to it's important. And I kind of snuck in there and said, well, informational interviews are overrated. And I like to call them curiosity conversations. And that it went back and forth. Well, it wasn't a very heated debate because we all actually agree on it but sometimes sem- semantics and, and words matter. So uh, we thought we'd get on a podcast to, to, to chat a little bit about uh, what they are, how to even do them, why they're important, and, and things like that. So uh, Miguel, why, why don't you start by maybe talking a little bit about your uh, post and, and maybe some of your experiences with uh, informational interview. Yeah, so let me start with uh, something, just to explain why, why, I'm thinking, why I'm thinking on information interviews as the tool to get you the job. Uh, yep. For my last six promotions, I landed those jobs just over coffee meetings, which I call the most information interviews. And and since then, I'm super happy, and I've been telling everybody you should do them, and you, and there is a way to do them properly. So that's why I posted on on LinkedIn and say, you know what, um, information interviews are underrated. And then you said, like, well, you know what, uh, it could be overrated. And we were discussing more about that. But I, well, the reason I say are underrated is because people, I don't see them using them uh, as as they as they should. So let me let me tell you my story about how I found about them, and then uh, we can go over there because I do agree. Information interviews, the the definition or the word or the semantics, um, uh, it's a little bit confusing, especially for me that um, English is not my first language, but um. I remember a conversation I had with a mentor and this mentor told me, Miguel, I think you should go on and do some information interviews just to find more about the industry, about the job, about what you do. And I was like, okay, uh, and what are those information interviews? Oh, you know what? Those, uh, they are like some coffee meetings. Just go on a coffee meeting and ask questions about your industry. And it's like, okay, then. So is, is that a thing to invite somebody on a coffee date and ask information about a profession, about a job? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Everybody does them and, and everybody's happy to, to help you out. Like, okay. So, of course, with a little experience, I, I invited a couple of people to say, like, hey, you know what? I would like to have an information interview with you. And some people were like, a what? It's like, yeah, you know, I just want to ask you questions about your job. Like, oh, okay. And then, of course, my first one I remember, I, 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 I wish that person, yeah. Um, had a second chance of uh, do it, uh, a meeting with meeting with the, with Haber because um, the first time I, I I did them I remember I was um, completely nervous I was like I don't know what I need to do and of course I I started just asking questions it's like okay so and I, I felt like a robot to be honest I was like okay um, how long have you been in the job did you like your job uh, what is your career experience <laughs> like super weird that person just saw me and it's like okay what, what happened and i was like okay this information interview thing i don't think it works so yeah of course i start asking more questions about how to do them properly what to say what to how to prepare for them and and how to prepare the conversation and everything changes then but uh, i i agree with you like him they they name information interviews a little bit misleading because it's actually just a, a conversation it's just a coffee meeting. I, I'm. I do not talk. I do not know everything about what you are doing, or um, uh, sometimes I just want to know a little bit more about a specific industry or a job description or whatever it is. And just having a conversation makes the, I guess, makes the whole difference. So, and I think that's where we agree. And then you call them curiosity conversations. It's like, yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. I call them coffee chats because it's easy. Yes, yes. And I would agree with that. And I think it is that concept, informational interviews. People think, well, one, it's to get a job, right? Because it's an interview, right? And that's not necessarily great. And also interviews is, as you experienced, it seemed like more of an interrogation. <laughs> it's just question, 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 question. 
that is okay, but it's not necessarily the best way to build a relationship, which is why I like to rebrand them as curiosity conversations. Coffee chats are great as right. well because it just shows like it's a chat. We're, we're talking. It's two ways, right? There, there's uh, information exchange. Informational interview seems like it's one way, right? So that was some of the premise, but definitely, uh, I mean, I, I probably posted that more to get a reaction out of folks <laughs> to see like, what are you talking yeah. about? It's overrated. Everybody's telling me to do them. Um, so I do uh, definitely recognize their importance in terms of concept, but the branding uh, and, and semantics, it might be semantics, but, but words are important. Just like I say where, where people say networking is so important. I say networking is overrated. Instead, build meaningful connections because the whole networking, it has a branding problem where it's, it's like the sleazy salesperson trying to sell the, a car or whatever, right? Versus, no, no, no. connect with this person, have a conversation, chats, try to uh, add value. So the, the words themselves often can help. But you're right. The, the premise is uh, super important. <laughs> Versus basically build relationships is really what you're trying to do at, at the heart of it. Uh, learn from others who have been uh, on that journey ahead of you. That is probably the, the most important part. And uh, it, because it's a two-way street, see how you can help and add value to um, so, so that, that, that's hundred percent. And, and I'm, I'm often doing them all the time where, uh, I'm, I'm lucky where my wife, uh, actually is, is a teacher and she gets a lot of like Starbucks gift cards and she doesn't go to Starbucks. So she ends up giving me a lot. <laughs> so I actually fund a lot of the coffee chats through, uh, I guess her students, but, but I, your wife's <laughs> just put it inside. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I started. I think we all agree on, on, on both agree that, that they are super important. So I'd uh, love you share a little bit about like, well, how do you ask? Like, like, so I met someone and they yep. might be a good per person to connect with, or I haven't yet met them. Like, do I, do I do it before, after, like, what, what is your process or what are your thoughts on, on starting an uh, international interview, coffee chat, curiosity conversation, whatever it is? Um, how do you ask for one? That's a great question. And, and you're right. Uh, everybody says you should do networking, but they don't explain how. I discovered that through information interviews or coffee chats, uh, you actually are, is, is the best way to build a relationship because uh, then you get to know that person a little bit more. And by knowing them, now you can provide value. And that's my, um, my premise at everything. If you provide value, everybody yeah. wants to hang around with people that are generous and provide value. So uh, how do I ask for them? First of all, I um, identified why, what kind of problem or what kind of um, solution I am looking for. Yeah. For example, at some point I was between, should I stay at TD Bank? Should I move to a Scotia Bank? For example, that was a real, a real question I had. And uh, I look into my network and say, okay, who has done that transition? And then what I did, um, people that are connected directly to me on LinkedIn or people maybe two or three uh, degrees of separation. And I just reach out. It's like, Hey, I noticed that you were here, uh, actually almost at the same time. And now you're, you moved to a different company. Uh, how you did it? Do you mind if we can spend 15, 20 minutes, uh, 15, 20 minutes, virtual meetings, in-person meetings, um, just to discuss more about that. And then, um, because it's very clear, very specific, and it's, it's kind of like time bound in a, in a way that is like short, um, a lot of people say like, yeah, for sure. Okay. We can talk more about that. And, and I'm one of the things I recommend is that if you have a, a link to your calendar availability, yeah. like a calendar link, uh, it's very easy instead of like just going back and forth of like, okay, you, can you do this this week, next week and, and so on. Yeah. But, um, that's one way just on, on a very specific, uh, situation. If I just want to connect, um, to, to grow and learn a new topic. For example, I wanted to learn about beekeeping. Okay. I was exactly the same way. It's like, Hey, I noticed that you have been a beekeeper for this many years. Uh, I am just starting. Do you mind spending 15 minutes with me just to guide me in the right direction of, uh, uh, what do you wish you knew early and, and some of the questions I just put them on, on, the, on a very short, uh, email or LinkedIn message. And I will say like eight out of 10 people will reply. Yes, for sure. Some people will ignore it, but well, that's life. Yeah, for sure. I, I like what you said about, uh, keeping it specific and keeping it like time bound, right? 
because most people have 15 minutes. Now, if you're asking for half an hour, an hour, uh, it, it's a little bit more challenging. And now with everybody on like virtual, like Zoom and things like that, it's even easier because it used to be, well, I have to allocate time to go down and get a coffee and, and meet yeah. you in the right place, right? But now it's just like, click a link, you're up and then you, you're down. So I think that's great. And, and the reason why I like the the term curiosity conversation is, is kind of what you said. Like, what are you interested about in this person? And if you do it based on the the person and their journey or advice or whatever versus on the fact that they end up, they actually work at a job and you think they can uh, get you a referral or something, that uh, kind of taints the intent of it, right? So if you go in it with the intent right. of, I'm connecting with this person to get a job, to get a referral, to get them to re review my resume. That often doesn't work out well. <laughs> uh, it, 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 yes. it happens, right? And uh, it, it can be somewhat useful. But uh, I usually tell people that when if you want to know whether you're networking correctly, you put it in the context of dating. Right. So in that context, you're basically asking this person for a one night stand right? versus come on, let's go on a couple of dates and see like we might not get married. But at least there, the, the possibility is, is, is there. Because if you think about it, jobs are kind of like professional uh, marriages. So there needs to be some compatibility there. So a lot of what you said about the curiosity, interest, asking for advice, preparing is, is a lot of uh, great uh, things that, that you need to do. And make it specific. Don't go in and saying, so what do you do for your life? Tell me about your like career journey. Well, it's on their LinkedIn profile. <laughs> it's all out there. Do a bit of research. And, and a very useful thing that I recommend folks to uh, have is, is basically uh, in preparation for the d discussion, I, and then if you start things like that, it, it just basically makes for a better uh, coffee chat, curiosity conversation, informational interview or whatever you have. So I think that's uh, a lot of great advice that, that you shared. Any other things that you'd want to add in terms of having folks uh, be better at, at requesting and, and asking and also understanding that, as you said, not everybody will say yes. Right. There will be some people that ignore you and, and that's, that's okay. okay. Right. And, and, and just be appreciative of that. But what are the thoughts or, or, um, things that did that spark a <laughs> bit based on, uh, on your experience with informational interviews? I, I love your example about dating. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a banker, I'm a, have a financial background, but I'm, I, I see that also as uh, if somebody asks you for money, it's like, Hey, you just met me. Uh, would you give me ten thousand dollars? And it's like uh, I don't think so. But if it was my sister, my brother, if it was my best friend, and they are in need, it's like okay, let's go to the ATM or let's figure it out something, right? It's just that intention of helping um, and and that um, trust factor of like okay, I know I'm going to help my friend. So how do you build that? And you build that through um, multiple uh, meetings and also through through something that you have in common with that person. Mm -hmm. That is why I love to do things uh, outside of work. So for example, going to church or going um, to specific activities where you meet people in in, in their element. So you, you can talk about what they love. And once you have that know, like, and trust factor built up, hey, everything is easy because uh, if I build a relationship with somebody that is um, a person, a beekeeper, again, sure. an example of a beekeeper, and we and we hit it off, and we're super friends now. Guess what? A beekeeper is connected with so many different people. In fact, the, the beekeeper that I connected with, he was an ex Price Waterhouse uh, Cooper uh, consultant. So immediately, his network was uh, to my disposal if I if I need it. So that's like one example of how to do it. So what I learned through through the years of trial and error and making them like several, I think I have the hundreds of probably even a, a, a thousand coffee minutes already. Uh, because uh, I just try and try again how to do them better. Um, one of the recommendations I can share uh, with you, Lucky, and also I have some questions for you, it's um, preparation. Preparation is super important. So if you have a 20-minute uh, meeting with somebody, you should be preparing probably like an hour or two in terms of uh, how are you going to talk about what is going to be the icebreaker? What, what is going to be the first conversation that you are going to start? Uh, quick recommendations that I learned over the years is do not talk about the weather. Not everybody likes the weather. If it's too hot, if it's too cold, don't talk about commuting or how was uh, your driving this morning because everybody like you don't they don't like it. Uh, I learned to ask questions about hey, 
uh, what is new and exciting or what have you, what, what is the, the thing that makes you the happiest or the most proud, uh, or the, you know, last week or something. So, um, once you start with, with a positive icebreaker, then I set up the agenda. It's like, thank you so much for meeting with me. Uh, if I was referred by somebody, it's like, Hey, lucky told me to meet with you because you're incredible and, and luck is incredible. And, and then you just, just build that connection again and setting up a little bit of the agenda to what, why you are meeting that person and how, um, how that information is going to be important. And then it's like, introduce yourself a very short quick elevator uh, pitch about, okay, who are you, why you're here, where are you going, and why this meeting is going to help you to make the next decision. Because something that you said is, uh, if you're asking for a coffee meeting to get something in return, right, it's not going to work out. But if you ask for a coffee meeting to ask for advice, to ask for guidance, then yeah, people are happy to provide advice and guidance. So once, once that intro is done, which takes probably five minutes at most, then you just, just jump into some of the questions. It's like, hey, uh, I've been in this situation. I saw that you were in a similar situation uh, where you were deciding to go to the left or to the right. Can you please explain a little bit more about what you did and so on? And then I just uh, I just have the other person uh, share the experiences and uh, ask about the challenges, the achievements. And the closing is super important because before we jump into the closing, I have a question for you, Lucky. How, how did you ask how do you, how did you prepare for them as well? Yeah, so a lot of it is is doing research, right? Because people, well, some people have like very well written, um, very extensive LinkedIn profiles. Some of them have nothing, right? So you do your best based on on, on what's there. I often like to make sure that um, the questions are, are provided ahead of time so that they know that I'm respectful there at the time, and these are the the ten to twelve uh, questions that, that that I'm going to ask or what have you. Um, so, so that's definitely w one thing that, that, uh, I do, uh, I, I like your, your icebreaker, the, the, the positive, uh, spin on it because yeah, I mean, the commute, the weather, uh, people always complain about stuff. <laughs> you don't want to start but, uh, a, a new conversation uh, with, with complaints, right? I actually recommend folks to also set a timer, right? So if you actually asked for 15 minutes, you better have a, a timer for like 13 minutes so that you give like two minutes to close off. Uh, and and just let them know that you are respectful of their time. Now, many folks will actually allow the conversation to go longer, right? If it's going well and they appreciate it. But some folks, especially senior execs, like they're they're bound to their calendar. And you give them fifteen minutes, you have fifteen minutes. You don't have twenty five. And if you do, you're making them late for the, their SVP meeting or <laughs> director meeting or whatever it is. And you don't want to necessarily be responsible for that. Um, and and showcasing that respect is there. Uh, yeah, so conversations. And then what I like to do is actually, well, earlier in my career, I would practice with, with friends, right? Not those specific questions, but I was quite awkward right? when I first networked. I wasn't yeah. comfortable. I was a shy introvert. So what I did was, was talk to classmates or coworkers or people that I didn't really know. Like I know them, but I don't know them. And I use that to work out the kinks uh, in terms of like, uh, how to ease into, how to navigate a cost, uh, conversation, how to switch to a different question or, or what have you. Um, so a lot of the preparation was nothing even related to this particular uh, in, informational interview, the coffee chat. It was before uh, just general networking. And then f for me, one of the big pieces was uh, you talk about preparation. Uh, I also encourage folks to do uh, post-paration, <laughs> which is uh, not the pre part, but the after. And once the conversation is done, like, what did you do well? What could you do better? So that you can take both of them and do it in the next conversation. So in that preparation, having chats with the people I sort of don't know, um, but it's not high stakes because they're not like a, a future boss, <laughs> senior manager, decision maker. Right. Uh, I, I constantly improve so that when I get to the point where, where there, it, this, there is this kind of high uh, stakes, so to speak, uh, conversation. I'm a lot more comfortable and have, have, have worked out the kinks, right? So uh, I think that that's how I prepare. Uh, and obviously there's the semantic things like make sure you send a calendar invite because I know so many students out there that they agree with uh, a professional that, okay, yeah, we're meeting Friday at 2 p.m. Then Friday at 2 p.m. comes and they're not there. They don't show up. Why? Because, well, again, a lot of senior people, they live off their calendar. And if it's not on their calendar, it doesn't exist. 
So send them a calendar invite, put all the information. Uh, I've also been subject to in person where sometimes you say, okay, we'll meet at the Starbucks at this and this. So I think there was one at like uh, Young and King and, and there's like two or three Starbucks. <laughs> so you need to make sure it's the right one. That happened to me. Yeah. So I usually ask folks for, uh, can I get your phone number if I'm meeting in person? Just in case if we need a text, because that has saved me a, a bunch of times because, oh, I'm at the one across the street or the one at the the mezzanine level instead of the underground level or the whatever. Um, so so that, yeah. but that, that's uh, some, some logistical stuff that I'll have people consider when they're looking for coffee chats, informational interviews and stuff. So what are your thoughts about that? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And they're very important. They're quite simple, but uh, sometimes that takes out 10 minutes of a, of a conversation because you're just trying to find your partner or the other person. Uh, in terms of uh, also preparation, um, sometimes people ask me, it's like, hey, I don't know what questions to ask. Mm. And something that I, I've been doing lately uh, just to help with that blank, blank canvas uh, syndrome is like, okay, where should I start? Uh, a quick tip would be to copy paste LinkedIn profile put it into chat GPT and say like, Hey, I'm meeting with this person. Can you please help me draft 10 information into your question? Yeah. And every time I've done it, it's like, Hey, I, I'm not, I'm not suggesting at all that you use those questions. I'm just saying like, this helps you just to start that spark of like, Oh yeah, I can ask about that. And it's like, also, uh, if you put more intent and content about your situation, your context, your profile, on chat GPT, Hey, that's a good example. And there are some AI tools too that can help you uh, tailor more about who are you meeting, what, how can you approach them, and so on. So those are important. Uh, in terms of uh, how you close the information interview, because uh, I can share how I do the, I do mine, and then also you can share yours. But you're right. Like be, uh, at the minute, minute twelve or thirteen, I, I usually say, you know what? Uh, with respect of your time, uh, time is flying so fast. I took so much, took so many notes, mental notes or in paper notes. As, as you wish, but um, I I do a recap and it's like in 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 this short period of time you helped me. To, you know, I was between A and B. Now it's more clear that this is my next uh, uh, potential direction or how I'm going to implement it. And I always say like, hey, will you be open to meeting with me probably in two or three months just to 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 follow up or you to see the progress or whatever? And I I put that seed into. The conversation because most of the times they say yes so if they say yes i'm open to meet again that's amazing because then it's easy just to follow up and say like hey you know what two three months later i thank so much for your feedback your advice i'm here again you know, with a different perspective and with more questions because now after taking uh, your guidance uh, here are all the five questions i have for example uh so that helps a lot and i always say a thank you later or a thank you note in, in a way that is like, hey, thanks so much for meeting with me yesterday. Again, it was incredible. Uh, this is what I learned. This is what I'm implementing. And I, I'm looking forward to connecting with you in the future. So that, that's kind of like how I do it. Very curious to know about you, your style. Yeah, same sort of thing. I think it, if we were to put a ch checklist together, ours would be very similar. <laughs> um, so so d definitely that. I already mentioned <laughs> the, the timing piece of it as well. The thank you note for sure. The recap as, as well. One of the other pieces is in addition to the recap and the thank you note, I actually make sure to, to uh, calendarize any action items, right? So if they give you advice, like you should look up this book or contact this person or whatever, you better do it, <laughs> right? Because if you follow up with them in two, three months sense. And, and they remember and they say, oh, did you ever check out the book I mentioned? And they're, you're like, uh, no. Or like, did you ever reach out to that person I mentioned? And you say, no. Well, then why are we having this conversation? Because I'm going to tell you something and you're not going to do it. <laughs> so make sure that you might not have exactly. done exactly it, but maybe at least something that's similar. It's like, well, I actually didn't read the book, but I looked at it and actually found three others that were similar but different. Um, have you looked at these books? Or I didn't actually reach out to this person, but I, I sent a message and they haven't responded back. And, and I did find these others that were similar. So at least make sure that, that you are actioning their advice and guidance because that's the thing that, that I, I hated most when I was on the other side of the coffee chat where people are asking for advice. I give them advice and they don't do it. They don't listen it, right? I, I, I do not want to follow up with this person and it doesn't make me want to do that. Um, yeah, so so definitely the follow-up. And, and I actually take that further where I will calendarize the, the, the follow-up where I would make sure that in two, three months, there's a pop-up that says, reconnect with Miguel or whomever it is, right? 
And I actually set that to never end, right? So it's not just the in two, three months. It's two, three months, and then two, three months after that, two, three months after that. And I adjust the cadence depending on on the person and, and their availability and um, whether or not they like the the frequency, right? Um, but it's it's to make sure that that it's uh, consistent because as we started with, like relationships take time to build, right? It's unlikely you'll have one, two conversations and now they're your besties, right? Now they're your mentor, but maybe three, four, then they're like, you know what? Miguel keeps keeps showing up. Luke, he keeps showing up. He keeps doing it and he's evolving and he's growing. Hmm. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll like to do a lot more of those. Um, yeah, so those would be some of the, the, the ways that I close as well. Um, is, is there anything else that, that I would have in that? No, I think most of it is, is again, our, our, our checklist are, are, are quite mirrored uh, on that side. I have a quick question for you. Like, it sounds like you put everything on your calendar, but do you have another system to follow up and say, like, okay, uh, this date we have this conversation or um, we talk about, you know, these five different topics? And, and do, do you have, like, a node system or a CRM um, yeah, when I started out, everything used to be on the calendar, right? And then I kind of advanced it to say, okay, there's too much on the calendar. So I put it into like a, a Google Sheet with everybody in the follow-up. And then now, yeah, I have a, a full-on CRM that, that I use because it just gets unwieldy on, on, a, uh, on, yeah. on a spreadsheet, right? Because there's just too too many people that you uh, connect with over the years. Uh, so yeah, I have a full CRM. Do most people need one? Probably not. So somewhere between calendar and um, a Google Sheet or an Excel or whatever is probably good enough. Uh, but that would be, be definitely helpful for, for folks to, to keep track because I agree that that sometimes it's like, what did we talk about? And if you put a couple of those notes, yes. some people are like, oh my gosh, you remember? Uh, and I'm like, no, I just take yeah. good notes. <laughs> or uh, or I... Uh, for some of the conversations, like, no, I can just scroll up in the message history and <laughs> can read up what we were talking about. So those are some things. But if you uh, show that that you're you're interested, you care, and, and then you remember these things, that it helps to accelerate the the building of, of this uh, this connection and this relationship. Yeah, totally. I, I, I read the book, uh, Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty mm-hmm. from Harvey McKay. And, and that's how I learned about exactly what you're mentioning. It's like, uh, you should take notes, mental notes, or and then download everything that you remember right after the meeting, just because if not, you're going to forget. Especially when you talk about in the icebreaker about things like, oh, I'm preparing for my, my son's birthday, or, oh, I'm going on a vacation next week, or, hey, you know, just those small comments that a lot of people, you know, take for granted. I take notes about them, and then I just follow up and say, like, hey, how was your son's birthday, or how was that vacation? Did you enjoy it? And then that that keeps people, um, you know, that makes people feel special because then you remember and you care. Then the reciprocity factor happens. It's like they also care about you, and they start asking questions more about you. It's like, oh, yeah, tell me more about what's happening in your life, Miguel. And I started similar to you, where uh, for for many years I had Excel. <laughs> And um, Excel was more than enough because it's like, okay, I'm meeting this person. This is what we talk about. Follow up about in three months about you know this topic. Or if I find an article about our conversation, I will send that article. It's like, hey, we just got this conversation. I look what I am reading today. I'm just thinking about you again. And you know, small comments like that. Um, and now today, I think uh, there is a tool called ClickUp okay. that I'm using. That is uh, a tool that you can use for everything, project management, CRM, anything, because it's just a task manager um, tool. Uh, it's incredible. But um, yeah, right now it's the same. And gives you the reminders, gives you like what's what to do, what ne- what's next. So I 100% recommend that too. But um, what I love Glock is that, um, you know, we both have done similar things and I'm doing similar approaches. Any other best practices that you have done over the years on what to do? on your conversations, coffee meetings? Yeah, one of the things that that, that I missed in terms of uh, the, the typical one is is what I call a value brainstorm, right? So um, there, there's a couple of components to it. Is, mm-hmm. is one, after the fact, to uh, think about it. So oftentimes it's with the reminder to say, um, well, how can I help this person, right? And uh, if you're in the, in the moment um, having the conversation, in the back of your head, whenever they're speaking, ask, how can I help with that, right? Now, initially, when you first start your your coffee chats, your curiosity conversations, 
you're not going to know. You'll be like, I don't know. How do I help? And, but then, uh, after weeks, months or years, maybe you'll get some inspiration. Like as you take a shower or walk the dog or whatever, so, oh, I can send him this article. I can introduce him to this person. I can, whatever it is. Uh, cause I treat that value muscle kind of like a muscle, right? The more you, you exercise it, the, the more it grows. Right. Um, so now I start to do that more purposefully it, it, with the, um, follow up to say, okay, before I meet this person, before I reach out, what is some area of value that I can have and provide? So maybe I read a blog post that I think they would be interested in. I, I, I listened to a podcast and like, yes, they would really help. Right. Sometimes I can find something and sometimes I can't, um, and, and before I connect, I'll, I'll just let them know that I was, I was thinking about them. This reminded me, and that can be a good way to kind of rekindle the conversation after three months, three years, <laughs> right? uh, depending on, on, on whatever the cadence is. Um, so that would be another, uh, best practice I would have. I, I wouldn't say it's a best practice. I think that's more of an elevated practice, right? Uh, cause to be able to do that, it really takes uh, a lot of effort. Like some of these, these things are super simple and should be almost like network hygiene, right? the basics that you need to do. But some of it are more like if you want to be like an advanced or, or, or a really uh, caring networker, someone who really builds meaningful connections, then doing stuff like this would be would be much more helpful. And when you do this, if you're always seen as the person who adds value and helps people, then uh, the relationships develop faster. Uh, I, I think there's research out there that in order for you to become go from acquaintance to like a casual connection, uh, it takes on the order of like 50 hours, right? And to become a a friend, it takes like 200 hours, right? And um, th there's the quantity of connection and there's also the quality. So when you do stuff like looking to add value, help and, and be respectful, give them updates and sh share how much their advice it has helped, that definitely goes more on the quality side where maybe it doesn't take 50, maybe it only takes 25, maybe it only takes five, right? Uh, because you've uh, invested the time to 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 be respectful of them. So yeah, that's another um, one one in terms of best practices <laughs> that I would include in there as well. I love them. Yeah, because you're right. You either have um, th there are two axes. The first one is time, and the other one's value. The more value you provide, of course, the more rich the relationship is going to be. But also, the more time you spend with that person, the the faster yeah. the addiction happens. One of the things I usually recommend as well is like find ways to spend the most time with the one person in one day. Of course, um, not always happens because if we're strangers, I don't want to spend more than you know, 20 minutes with a stranger. But in some instances, there are uh, events like golfing. So when you go out golf with somebody, especially if it's a non-for-profit charity yeah. um, situation, sometimes you're golfing with executives. And you're golfing with that team yeah. for the entire day. So that's a perfect example of how can you compress that uh, factor of like uh, the more time and the closeness of that relationship um, builds really quickly. Another example I had was uh, when I went fishing with uh, a group of uh, colleagues. After that, everything changed. And... We, we became super close from being completely strangers, working at the same institution and com being like super close uh, friends just after one fishing uh, experience. So yeah, again, time and value, if you can compress them, that's incredible. And also another uh, consideration about value, as you were mentioning, providing value. Something that I learned about this uh, in the book that I mentioned um, was sometimes you, you, you don't need to provide value to the person that you want to meet. But if you provide value to the person that uh, he or her loves most, then that also works out. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, in a conversation, you can you can hear that um, this person is kind of like very focused on collecting stamps for his or for his boy, for his son. Well, next time it's like here's a rare stamp that maybe your son doesn't have, and that creates more like wow, this person cares, and uh, of course. That that's going to be a superhero in front of the sun. So if you can do that more, that, that helps a lot. And I usually share this example about um, a person that we we I was mentoring. And I remember I went to to visit my family in Mexico. And I received a message from this uh, from this now my my friend, and 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 he told me it's like, hey, where you live, you just received two feet of snow. If it's okay with you, I can go and and shovel your driveway. 
And I was so touched and I was so, so happy to hear that because yes, I, I, I saw that we received 60 centimeters of snow and I was not sure how I was going to park my, my car, especially with my family. And, you know, we were arriving in the middle of the night. So it was like, oh boy, it's going to be a rough night. Um, but just that intention of like this person trying to help, trying to be of value meant the world for me. And because of that, I think that was a tipping point for me. It's like, okay, he's no longer a stranger. He's no longer my mentee. Now it's my friend. And now I invite him to, you know, to for my uh, family events for, for like, hey, let's come and, and eat tacos, you know, like more, more personal just, just because of that. And what is insane, what is incredible was that he didn't have to do it because my neighbors did it. So my neighbors uh, were cleaning driveways. They saw that I was not around them. They cleaned my driveway without asking. So two things. I have incredible neighbors. That's incredible. But uh, this person just, the intention of like trying to help. That's that's what matters. Sometimes it's just intention. So again, going back to to your best practice, I, I agree. It's, it's just a matter of like uh, finding the way to to make the other person feel valued, special, and important. Yeah. And I think that's a good point where it doesn't necessarily have to be in a professional context because people think that when you're having a coffee chat, it has to be uh, at work or I have to do market research or things like that, right? So sometimes it's just shoveling driveway, maybe a restaurant recommendation, or did, did they uh, find a stamp or whatever for their kids or things like that. It could be in a, in a personal context as well. And then one thing, other thing that came to mind is we're talking about kind of the the formal scheduled informational interview where we know that next Friday at 2 p.m. we're meeting, but I encourage folks to have kind of the informal ones, right? Talking about to that person that uh, maybe you play whatever uh, in, in the book club or your, your pickup basketball no, uh, match and you know them, but you don't really know them. Use that as an opportunity to have a curiosity conversation. Not not the informational interview part or your interrogate, yeah. uh, but have that coffee chat bit and, and maybe stay after and, and, and go to the cafe or, or like you said about the golf tournament, right? Go for, for drinks on, on the 19th hole, the 18th hole or whatever it is. And uh, those conversations in, informally uh, can also turn into uh, great relationships because there are ample opportunity to improve your networking, to improve your information interviews, curiosity conversation, coffee chat skills uh, around you if you if you take the time to to look right. So that just be another last thing that, that I'd want to to add to the uh, the conversation. I love that. I love that. So to recap, uh, they are underrated, overrated at the same time. <laughs> Information interviews, uh, super important. Uh, but of course, if you do them as a coffee chat, as a, as a curiosity conversation, that's the intention. It's like, hey, I'm here to learn more about you. Yes. I want to help you. I want to serve you. Something that I, I've seen and I've learned over the years is that uh, people sometimes don't expect that question. It's like, hey, what can I do for you? And it's like, mm, you cannot do anything. It's like, you know, it's uh, sometimes it's weird, but it's more about... Um, Active listening and say like, okay, this person loves these uh, these things that I can support or I can help. And then with, with the years, uh, another thing that you can also improve is like ask prompting questions to help you uh, understand how can you provide more value. So for example, um, um, in, in that intro or elevator pitch, you can say something more about um, uh, what do they, uh, you can ask questions about what do they love to do, what, what are the best things that they love. They love about their job today. And then with, with the way they answer, you can understand it's like, okay, this person likes more data or it's more big picture, or if this person wants more specifics or, or more generic. And then with that, you can tailor more about, okay, I can provide more value about, as you mentioned, providing a book, a recommendation. Or did maybe this person needs to know the other person because they are so similar, they can help so much each other. So yeah, so many, so many things to do, but just to recap, it's, um, the greatest tool ever, from my perspective, I became addicted to these coffee chats a long time ago. I've been doing them for a while. I, I keep doing them. When I was looking for job promotions, I was doing five to six a week. And when I'm not looking for job promotions, I'm still doing three to four a week. So it's uh, it's just um, a, a matter of like practice. And, and sometimes I just do them just to learn more about the other person and, and to see what else I can do. But to your point, looking, it's taking notes and following up and, and serving, how can I serve better? How can I help the other person? And that just helps you build relationships like crazy. That's awesome. So yeah, as, as you mentioned, 
it doesn't really matter what you call them as long as the intent is to to care to serve the other person right. and and really make it more about them versus make it about you that often has the the most beneficial rewards as part of the process and learn grow get a little bit better than you were last time don't worry if the first conversation is totally awkward and you totally mess it up yeah but just make sure that to, to get that better and improve the next time so uh thanks so much for sharing your insights on informational interviews, copy chats, uh, curiosity conversation, how to network, that sort of thing. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back for a future episode. Oh, I love this. Lucky. Thank you so much also. I, I, I love how everything happened just out of a post and then you know, we're talking now about, about it. And I think we had a really, really good conversation with a lot of uh, good insights for people. So thanks so much for the invitation. Um, I'm looking forward to, to connect again. And as always, Lucky, super happy. Sounds good. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you. See you soon. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.